Hi, let's talk about isotopes. Isotopes are formed when we change the number of neutrons that in turn changes the mass number and we have what are called isotopes. Okay, so changes in the number of neutrons results in isotopes. Um, they have a different mass numbers and here's what's interesting. Uh, they typically exhibit, or they do, they exhibit the same the same chemical properties. And that is very useful for scientists because some isotopes are radioactive and then they have the same chemical properties as the non-radioactive isotope. So they can use that um, radioactive isotope um, to kind of put a tracer on chemicals um, when they're looking for chemical reactions, biochemical pathways, and so forth. Um, so that's a that's pretty important concept that they have the same chemical properties. Now, they're often designated, especially if they're neutral and we don't need a charge, with a hyphen after the name. Now, you notice these are whole numbers. And that assumes that the mass of a proton is equal to the mass of a, of a neutron. And we're also neglecting electrons. And to complicate things, there's things called binding energies, which contribute. So sometimes you'll see these. I've done one example where they're not whole numbers. OK, um, so often whole numbers, but sometimes given to you as like 13.998, really close to whole numbers. All right, the atomic mass is the weighted average. So if you have, it's a, an, a, of all the mass numbers of all the isotopes weighted by their abundance. So when you take your grades, if your quizzes, if your quiz average was a 90 and quizzes were 20% of your grade, you'd multiply that by 20 over 100. You kind of do it automatically. And if your lab average was a 95 and your labs were weighted as, um, say, 30% over 100. And then your tests, let's say you had an 88 on your tests. They are harder, after all. And those were 50% of your grade. Do you notice we're weighting your grade by the percentage of each component? Exact same process. So I call this the fraction. The, the percent over 100 gives us the fractional abundance. So let's take a look. Um, the fraction is simply the percent divided by 100. We usually use decimal forms. Um, if exact masses are given, use those exact masses. If not, use the simplistic mass numbers. A helpful hint. The sum of all percent abundance should be 100. The sum of all fractions should be 1. Okay, so with that backdrop, let's do magnesium. So I want to take, I say, fraction, mass, plus fraction, mass. Fraction, mass, plus fraction, mass. It's almost kind of sing-songy. So I'm going to do the fractional abundance. So it's 78.70 divided by 100. I'm going to be a little explicit here. You might simplify that as 0 0.7870 times its mass number plus 10.13 the abundance over 100 percent abundance over 100 times 25 plus 11.17 over 100 times 26 so fraction mass plus fraction mass plus fraction mass. And if you added all that up, what you would put on the periodic table is 24.32 atomic mass units. Okay, let's try one more of these. This one has exact masses and it's not put in a pretty table for us. So I have 19.99 went with the 92. If you read it carefully, 20.99 goes with the 0.25. 
Sometimes it helps to underline, especially in color, and then the 21.99. So we're going to take fraction mass, so 90.92 over 100 times the mass number of 19.99. Can't quite see that number one there. Plus fraction, fraction mass add. Don't multiply, don't subtract. Add the next fraction times its mass. Whoops, 100. Oh, that looks like do, because I'm making a doo doo, a boo boo. There we go. Oh, Dina. All right, 0.25 times 100, and then that would be times the 20.99 plus 21.99. Whoops, Dina. It's getting late in the afternoon. Making these videos on a day the air conditioner went out at my school. 100. Okay, there I got it straight for you. All right, fraction times mass plus fraction times mass plus fraction times mass. And if you do that mathematics, and if I did mine correctly, and you always want to check atomic mass units. Okay, thanks for joining me. In my next video, I'm going to do the next harder step. Instead of finding the average atomic mass, we're going to solve for the percent abundance. A little trickier algebra. Hope you can join me.